Welcome everyone once again to the world of board gaming. That's right, the ordinary guys with the gluttony for all things games are back, brimming with enthusiasm for the latest and greatest releases. Indeed, we cannot wait to bring all the latest news, reviews, video features and special guests who will tell us about their lives, their thoughts on games and take on our communal gaming challenge. It's not just about us though, join the debate on all things gaming now and get in touch via our website, Facebook and Twitter and let us know what you want us to showcase on the programme. Coming up on this week's show, and oh my god, I'm being attacked by a spider. Wow, that was I'd a better good get start. out of here. He, oh, he's really angry. He, he doesn't like me at all. I thought the spiders went away. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> slight of tongue. No. But not there. But not there. But okay. somewhere in the middle. New! So this is the new section where every single week we look at the uh, the greatest things and the biggest things going on in the world of gaming and uh, what is going on this week? What's well, the big story? Our big story this week, Greg, and it is a big one. Microsoft is allegedly nearing a deal to acquire Mojang, the uh, maker of one, the one and only Minecraft. I, sure I've heard of, people that. Have heard of that. A couple of people have played that. Yes, they? I think a few people, just about 50 million, in fact, have, have played Minecraft. It's a big deal because it's just come out on the new uh, consoles, including Sony's consoles, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 3. Um, so there's a lot of question marks right now about, well, if Microsoft bought the company, is it therefore still going to be available on the Sony platform? So a lot of people are a bit worried about that. Um, the question is, if they're, they're acquiring it for around about the two billion mark, um, Indeed. A, you know, even with 45 That's million who have already downloaded it, it's coming out on the PlayStation or it's just come out on the PlayStation, are they going to make their money back or are they investing in the future of It's a of lot of company? money to spend on one game. Um, I don't know they're if they're... investing in the future of Mojang. They're, they're hoping that Minecraft 2... Will Minecraft be, 2, indeed. With the polygons Re will uh, Return will of the, the Killer money. Minecraft. Minecraft, yes, we'll do pretty well. So that is the big story this week. Um, who knows what, how it's going to pan out. We haven't had any confirmation as to uh, the deal that is in place, but I'm sure we'll find out more as we go along. Well, you can't ever sort of undervalue the, the idea of, of a very important IP. Um, and, and a company that know this very well are Fantasy Flight, the huge uh, American games manufacturer, um, who, who manufacture board games and card games, who have, uh, who have the rights and have had the rights for some time now to do the Star Wars, anything to do with Star Wars. Um, and to say they're milking it is an understatement. Not in a negative way, their games are very, very good, but um, they have got quite a few releases coming out so they have a, a new card game possibly a living card game where you collect extra sets possibly a standalone we don't know yet um but it's going to be called star wars empire versus uh, rebellion which taking advantage of the film coming out next year no just doubt. a little bit i yeah, should yeah. think uh they've also got uh, another release in their x-wing miniatures game um and this is a whole new faction so not just a little release which they have quite often but uh, a whole third faction so you've got the the empire you have the uh empire you have the rebels and now you're going to have scum and villainy oh, so where you can play uh, as uh, notorious bounty hunters and pirates and uh, Black Sun agents like uh, Boba Fett and Greedo and the like. Fantastic. OK, well, back in the computer game world, Microsoft has pledged to replace a small percentage of noisy Xbox One consoles. So no one likes a noisy console, do they? Nobody Especially likes playing an atmospheric console. game. Uh, Activision claims it has already made back the £500 million investment it made in, uh, to, get Bungie, uh, to get Bungie made, to get Destiny made, um, declaring Destiny the biggest franchise launch in games history. I think it's a now eclipsed uh, uh, Grand Theft Auto. Indeed, five, indeed. It? They're not telling us how many co copies they've actually sold of the game yet, though, which is they're talking about sold to shops and not actually sold to yeah. players. So that's an interesting one. Uh, also in board games, we have the first look of the Homeland board game being Ooh. bought out by Gale Force 9. Nice. Um, we literally have a look at the box cover, uh, as you can see now, but uh, yes. that is, is all that we is have. That is literally it. Yes. Uh, that is literally it. That's um, all we know. Uh, Homeland, a war on terror. So um, hopefully it's as thematic as some of their other games that they, that they bring out. Fantastic. Um, out this week, NHL 15 um, for most major con uh, consoles. Uh, Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm Revolution. Say Try that say that when you've had a couple of drinks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Tropico Dictator Pack, I'm looking forward to that. That's a collection of all the first Tropico games, first four Tropico games and all the expansions. 
and a game called Run Like Hell on the PS Vita. <laughs> Not sure what it's about, but I like the title. One, one assumes that uh, it does exactly as it uh, Yes, on the what's team. that all about? Thoughts on a post Some sort of walking or something, I, I believe. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, so, so there's quite a lot going on at, at the moment in, in the world of games. Um, just the sheer amount of releases are sort of coming out. Yes, but the Minecraft story is a massive story. And, I, I, I think it's huge. We're going to be following that as we go along. And, uh, and personally, I just bought the PlayStation 4 version, so I hope they don't sell it. Review. Released in late 2013, this highly anticipated game based on the cult TV series saw you circumnavigate the verse as the pilot of a Firefly-class ship. Travelling through both alliance and border space, the player faced many risks as they actively avoided run-ins with the authoritative alliance or the vile and deadly Reavers. Working jobs for characters from the hit show, players would compete to reach their final goal. Blue Sun is the third expansion for Firefly, adding a whole new board section as players now get to venture into the perilous rim space and deal with new contacts Lord Harrow and Mr. Universe. Adding two new story cards, the expansion also introduces setup cards to further enhance the player experience. With more Reavers on the prowl, are you brave enough to venture into rim space? Blue Sun expansion is available late September from all good retailers. So Firefly, the Blue Sun expansion. Um, what can I say? It's it's an excellent game. That was a beautiful little video you did there. Great oh, thank guy. you very, very much. much. Enjoyed it. Oh, beautiful soundtrack that game, isn't it? It, it has. It's got yes. a stunning soundtrack. In fact, I, I do have to admit, I'm terribly sorry to say it, but I haven't actually seen Firefly yet. Great. Uh, shame on you. I know. Call I know. yourself you've lent me the geek. box set. Okay, I've, I've, in fairness, I've, I've lent him the box set. He's actually had the box set for around about three months, four months now. <laughs> I'm lending the box out of Firefly Don't and Trinity, and he hasn't played it. Shocking. So um, I'm a bit of a noob when it comes to Firefly, but I can see it's a really nice board, well, and I hear great things about it. Well, it's a stunning game. This is the third expansion to, uh, to Firefly. Um, the first expansion, I have to admit, a little bit cheeky. I, I felt that what they did is they removed 50 cards from the, um, the game before they sent it to you, and then they sold them back to you. But admittedly, it was only five or ten pounds um, for that, um, and they do add something to the game. The second expansion, which uh, I, have, I have played with, but I haven't got, is uh, Pirates and Bounty Hunters, which um, introduces this uh, PvP element, this player versus element. Uh, player versus element. Put my teeth back Pen in. Penelope player Man. versus <laughs> player um, <laughs> element that uh, was missing, and some people said they wanted. Um, but Blue Sun is is the first one to actually go. No, we're going to do better. Now we're going to add a whole new section of the board. So you've got your uh, base game board here, as you can see, and uh, Blue Sun adds this whole new extra area. So, so you have um, in there a bit. Doesn't it, it does. Yeah. yeah. So you have like um, so you have uh, here you have uh, a lion space which you're flying around. So please explain to a layman who hasn't played this game at all before what are the basic mechanics. The basic mechanics is it's a it's a game where you play alongside other players and you have to do jobs. You have to you're a Firefly class ship um, um, if you're playing one of those. Most of them are that, and you're picking up goods and you're doing jobs for various different degrees of uh, dodgy characters and wheeling and dealing. Um, and you're doing criminal jobs and some legal, some illegal, some immoral. Um, and really you're getting immoral. paid and you're trying to get money. There are different there are different uh, cards that allow you to. Um, to uh, play different uh, sets. Is it a hard game to get into? Is it a hard game it's, to learn? It's it's quite hard game to learn. It's not ridiculously hard. It's not of like Twilight Imperium sort of length or um or complexity. Um, what does come with it is the fact that it is uh, it is. It's got a lot of cards and a lot of little components. It has uh, 17 decks of cards um, if you play this and the original wow, base game. Wow, fantastic. Um, but it's, it's a fantastic game. What I like about it, what I like about the expansion is it's adding new things. It's adding two new contacts to deal with, um, and one of those has got a different mechanic, which is really nice. It's adding, um, it's adding new setup cards, which work in conjunction with story cards. Um, but mostly, it's, it's just a fantastic game. If I had to have a niggle with it, I'd say that in four-player um, matches, especially with um, some new newbies and people who aren't used to playing this game, um, there's quite a, a, an amount of um, downtime. You might be okay, 10, so 15 minutes. Waiting for someone else yeah, to finish what you, you really doing. have to have okay. people who, are, who have got in mind what they're going to be doing when their turn comes around. And uh, that certainly helps speed up the game. And uh, if you're playing with new people, don't play with maybe more than three. But but with 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 more experienced players, you, know, you can have the bigger games for five players, um, and it can go quite is quickly. Is it worth it, this expansion set? It, I, I think it is. I'm is a complete... 
it is. I think it does. It massively adds because you have got a whole new area of rim space. You've got more threat from these uh, dreaded reavers which are there to uh, to hurt you. So I think it adds quite quite a lot to it. Um, I, 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 I love this expansion. I thought it was very good. As I said, it does add more complexity um, for new players. Um, so it's not a game that you want to... I, I would start off playing the base game, then getting the expansions and working your way through them if you're a new person. But overall, a, a fantastic game. Um, I feel we should have a quick look at the ratings then. So first of all, we're going to look at our star rating and see what that comes up with that. And uh, finally, are we going to uh, see what it gets well, on the boardometer? Our classic mechanic, the boardometer. What, what are we going to have? It's going to come up with. Lime! Lime! Lime. That's pretty good. That's not a boring game at all, there. Uh, lots and lots of longevity. You can keep on playing it. Um, only only a little bit into the green because of its uh, downtime. But apart from that, fantastic game. Very near perfect. So, Great. So, Firefly, the Blue Sun expansion, coming out at the end of September. After the break! You had to drink a lot of coffee, get the lips going really <laughs> quickly there. And He's quite oh, I found a cow. I found a cow. It won't give me wool, but I'll get it anyway. We are back from the break and ready to bring you up to speed on another huge event in the world of video games. That's right. For those of us who live in Europe and pine for the chance to get together with every flavour of gamer and catch a sneak peek of upcoming releases, Gamescom is the show for you. It's a show that gets bigger every year and has firmly established itself as the best place to see quirky and original titles. PC, mobile and console game makers were out in force to showcase their latest wares. But for today's event roundup, Jim decided to take on the mammoth press conferences and attempt to summarise all the big news against the clock. Check it out. OK, so Gamescom, it's a trade fair for video games and it's held in Cologne, Germany. It's basically Europe's answer to E3, except in this case you can actually attend being an ordinary gamer, not having to be a member of the press. Sony and Microsoft took most of the attention, as is the prevailing trend these days, talking about their shiny new-ish consoles. Each put on a press conference that lasted well over an hour and a half, but today we're going to try and wrap both of them up in under 90 seconds. Game on! Okay, cool, Microsoft first. Yo, Phil, what up? FIFA 15 has exclusive Ultimate Team features on Xbox One. Peter Schmeichel agrees. It's okay, Microsoft are good with indie titles now, honest. Just let Captain Super Geek here show you his pick of them. It's Phil again, and we're back with Call of Duty Advanced Warfare in what is yet to be described as an interesting demo. And is in fact described as a lot less interesting than what we saw at E3. Hardware bundles, yay! Evolve, the four-on-one fantasy shooter brought to you by eSports. Oh look, it's Phil 2, the English one. Marvelous. Rise of the Tomb Raider is an Xbox One exclusive. Holiday 2015, which actually means there's not really an exclusive, just a timed exclusive. Ugh, a tad disappointing. Wow, we finally get Quantum Break gameplay footage. Pretty. Fable Legends, will you play as the heroes or play as the villain? Well, obviously you're gonna play as the villain, it's far more fun. Forza Horizon 2, the open world version of Forza, and apparently, according to the developers, it's gonna be like so much more social than Drive Club. Ori and the Blind Forest, now that is one pretty game. Sunset Overdrive, crazy silly mutant shooter, yo. Halo TV, it's like a dashboard for everything Halo, including the new Halo 5 game and uh, pretty much anything else uh, Halo. Seriously, trust Phil One, Xbox is like the best place to play. I mean, like ever. So that was Microsoft's conference, brought to you by Phil Spencer's bolshy confidence, yet humbled by an ever-present apologetic tone. Okay, you're up, Sony. Ah, oh, Little Big Planet 3, how charming. Well, there's a gruesomely gothic world if I ever saw one. It's called Bloodborne, apparently. Ah, here comes Captain Charisma himself, Jim Ryan. 10 million PS4 sold. Well, marvelous. Look, he's dug out a wide-eyed indie developer who's obsessed with communism. Must be a student, then. But seriously, look, look at this amazing game, The Tomorrow Children. Looks like a cross between a computer game and a board game. Mad! Ooh, a crime, mystery, puzzle-solving thriller thingy, The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. For those who love epic fantasy, we've got Hellblade, beautifully artistic open world adventure fair. If that's your bag, you're gonna like the upcoming rhyme. Destiny! There's a game called Destiny, you have to play it because like they spend more money than anyone else ever on the marketing. If you play Far Cry 4 on the PlayStation 4, you'll be able to invite a friend to play with you for free, even if they don't own the game. 
Well, that's nice, isn't it? Made possible by Sony's new tech, SharePlay. Oh look, Hideo Kojima's been wheeled out to talk more about Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain and his personal love for cardboard boxes. So, Drive Club, the social racing simulator. Yes, we know it looked a bit crap last year when we first tried to release it, but don't worry, it's looking pretty good now. The most effeminate bearded man in history tells us all about Tearaway. And finally, Wild, a fantasy open-world simulator where you can play as literally any animal. I'm personally hoping to play as an earthworm. Well, that's it for our roller coaster ride through Gamescom 2014. Both Sony and Microsoft had very strong shows, but I have to say, for a heady mixture of imaginative new titles and some new hardware innovations such as SharePlay, I have to give this win to Sony. My pick of the games? Ori and the Blind Forest. It's so beautiful to look at. And the tomorrow, children, comrade. We will fight. We will mine. We will live! Well, there you go. Gamescon in record time. That, that, was, <laughs> record that was quite time. an impressive That was feat. quite a task there, Greg, I have to say. Had to drink a lot of coffee, get the lips going really <laughs> quickly there and uh, get through that. But it was great fun. And both Microsoft and Sony put on fantastic press conferences. I can't help but think that if uh, Gamescon and E3 and, 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 and conferences like this, the big releases, uh, uh, kind of did it at that speed, they would be a lot more bearable to sit through, <laughs> wouldn't they? Well, so there are some boring moments. I tried to cut out as much of the boring stuff as I could. But you know what? Although I gave the conference to Sony, I have I have to say Microsoft also put on a great conference. We're not biased here. Um, there's some fantastic games coming out uh, for, for the Xbox One as well as the PlayStation 4. So you know what, Greg? It is a fantastic time to be a console gamer. It really is. Well, I'm, I'm very excited about some of the releases coming out and, uh, and I'm very much looking forward to, to playing some of these. Hopefully we'll have some of them on the show. Uh, indeed, we, we should be looking at Destiny within the next few weeks and, and a few others. Going so, up uh, to Christmas, it's always incredibly exciting. It's going to be so, very uh, exciting. Yeah, we're very excited, everybody. Indeed. <laughs> As the aforementioned, the amazing Minecraft, which is now probably going to be owned by Microsoft, therefore maybe this game version will not be available anymore, Greg. This is the PlayStation 4 version of Minecraft. And oh my god, I'm being attacked by a spider. Wow, that, that was I a better good get out of he, oh, He's really angry, he, he doesn't like me at all. I thought the spiders went away. Um, once uh, daylight comes back, I'm going to attack oh. him with my sword. And oh, that's not working out. And oh, oh my dear. god. Oh. I oh, managed you to got kill him. him. You got him I yay. managed to kill him. I get an achievement monster hunter. Isn't that fantastic? Right. So, so um, this, I've built it, a shelter here, Greg. It's yeah. It is. Uh, so uh, to, uh, to to pick up. Um, th Jim has already built a, a shelter um, from uh, from a previous games because we only have a five minutes or so to show you. And if we uh, just went from building shelter, it's a lot of him hitting trees and making stuff. So uh, we've got a bit of a shelter, but you are you're forced to make a shelter exceedingly quickly, um, simply because uh, if you don't, then the nasties come and get you at night, don't they? So, they certainly uh, do. They certainly do. Um, I better. I better uh, <laughs> So quick, the correct tool here. I'm just trying to find some stone. This, these, these are grey blocks of stone. I'm trying to finish the shelter, um, and of course, like you say, make sure the monsters can't attack me in my my peaceful little dwelling. And it also means I'll be able to create a furnace where I'll be able to uh, forge all kinds of. Uh, Fantastic things. Um, I don't know if it'll allow me to do alchemy. That would be nice. But uh, no, you have in to. The absence obviously, of that, uh, obviously, Minecraft's only just come out on the PS4. But obviously, it's it's a worldwide sensation. There's 45 million uh, copies of it sold um, worldwide. And um, my, my daughter, for one, is obsessed with it. She absolutely loves this game. And so. Uh, all things considered, we're coming a little bit late to the party here, but um, you have to admit, I bet it wasn't one of the games you thought you'd ever be playing or that really interested you, but uh, how are you finding it? I tell you what, I was never... I always looked at it and I thought, you know what, it looks ugly, so I'm not interested. <laughs> <laughs> I have to admit that, I'm sorry to say. But you, you know what? You nasty, aesthetical sort of uh, I diva. I know, I know, I tell you uh, what. It doesn't look good enough, I don't like the graphics. It doesn't look good enough for me. Yes, no, seriously. Um, Despite the aesthetic, I have to admit, I've started playing it. I'm getting quite obsessed with it. I think that's the issue. It hooks you in. It is. I mean, this is the survival mode, which, uh, as you just saw, that horrible little spider that was trying to attack me just now. You do have to uh, protect yourself as you play. Um, and of course, you have to try and get out of mines that you've dug yourself into as well. Where, where's the exit here, Greg? So, an interesting Tell fact did you know that before this was called Minecraft, it was uh, called, um, I think it was Cave Dweller or Cave. Cave craft or something that. like that. Yes, it was, it was something with cave in it anyway, um, to begin with. Um, and uh, and it's been used worldwide. Did you know that the uh, the the, uh, the land of Denmark, 
The yep. Danes themselves have actually recreated the whole of their nation on Minecraft. The whole of their the nation? The whole of their nation. That is um, absolutely amazing. It is. I it's absolutely fantastic. Certain um, trolls then went on the game and smashed a few things down and put American flags on it. But uh, as a rule, you wow. can play the you whole of the nation. You can't stop the trolls, Denmark. unfortunately. You can't. Um, and, and it has been uh, used as a teaching uh, tool over there as well. Um, but what a so fantastic this is, game. Um, this is the survival mode. There is the creative mode, which uh, allows you just to create anything without being interrupted in the slightest by any monsters trying to kill you. Um, I'm trying to uh, just uh, and like, you should to explain see here. I'm trying to make something in a... And you should see some of the things that have been created. Uh, so, so, for example, we have uh, Battlestar Galactica has been uh, created on Minecraft. Uh, someone else has recreated the whole of... Um, the whole of the world from Games of Thrones. Uh, we also have uh, the ancient city of Babylon has been recreated and, uh, and loads more in between as well. We have so many amazing uh, feats that have been recreated um, right. in the creative mode. I'm showing off my incredible Minecraft skills right now, as you can see. In, can in fairness, see. having seen you know some of these uh, amazing creations, I'm, I'm not impressed with your little bit of a crap No, no, I, 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 <laughs> that was a bit crap. It may, be, <laughs> it may be functional, it may stop the zombies and the skeletons ah. from nibbling on your head. I have created coal. You have created the coal. The greatest lump of coal. It is not greatest green, it is coal. The uh, <laughs> the I've created the greatest black, black green. Reference there. No, very nice. Yes, indeed. Uh, so, creating coal allows me to create a torch, it's... which I can place in my uh, in my little humble dwelling here, and allows me to see at night, which... Uh, it's I've it's very poorly made thing. when you consider then you know the graphics aren't amazing but, but the worst thing is okay this is this is very dangerous this is teaching kids to build whole little uh, shacks made out of wood and then put fire right next to it I know this it's, is, it's not a great safety message are I we going to have, gonna to have uh, the first Minecraft related casualty sometime because of <laughs> <laughs> So uh, my dwelling is doing pretty good. The main thing I'm missing is a bed. Um, now, in order, to create, in order to create a bed, trying to get the words out, um, I do need to find some sheep and I do need to get some wool. That does involve killing big square sheep, Greg. It's, it's surprisingly, for, for something that's, you know, your first fault you think is, is able for kids, it's, it's quite Oh, graphic. I found a cow. I found, found a, a cow. cow. It won't give me wool, but I'll kill it anyway. Give me a bit of meat. There we go. I can so eat in that. So in a nutshell, do you think you're going to spend many hours playing this? Have you become addicted to I it? am addicted. Minecraft is addictive. And you know what? You can get a free version of it um, on the PlayStation Store and Xbox One. So why don't you try it out? Indeed. Still to come. I couldn't decide on one favourite game. I couldn't decide no. on ten... Yes! No! no. I missed! Welcome back, everyone. We introduced our debate segment on our first show last week and got a fantastic response to our question, the perception of being a gamer. So thanks again to everyone who sent us their thoughts. That's right. This week, we thought we'd go for a lighter subject, though. We asked you, what's your favourite game and why? <laughs> Okay, so our very first answer comes from Georgie Devereaux. She says backgammon in the old-fashioned board and die version. Well, they go straight away. We're going very old, old school there. Old school. Old um, school indeed. Less is more, Greg. Less is more. Indeed. Um, our, our next uh, reply is uh, from Frank Wood, who says Goldeneye and Micro Machines were major games of his younger yeah. days. Uh, more recently, though, and I think you're going to agree with this, he says uh, The Last of Us, probably for sheer epicness. Well, it got a perfect score last week, Greg, so... Exactly, so I, I knew you, you were going to agree with that one, so... Yes, indeed. Uh, Rick Bunyan tells us race for the galaxy it is a small and fairly quick to set up it never seems to promote the uh, I'm beaten let's screw with the other players kind of mentality and uh, uh, he seldom turns up to a gaming club without it so I haven't played that game Greg but uh, would you it, agree it is a fantastic game I wouldn't agree that it's it's my favorite game ever but obviously it's a matter of taste um, but it is a very good game and um, yeah I think it does promote sort of a, you know more fun and less no table turners no no one. table turners or cutthroat competitiveness which is, which is always good absolutely um, I think by far the most uh, popular answer we've had um, is, is, is Fallout 2. And um, Mike South has said, uh, Fallout 2, uh, without a doubt. Um, and this is also an opinion shared by uh, Achilles, uh, she's as uh, Andy Compton, and, and quite a few more. Fallout 2, I'm not sure. You know, yeah, rather um, bizarrely. Fallout 3 won all the awards. Or but... Fallout 3, it's, it's the middle yeah. child as such. Maybe it's like <laughs> the Beatles, it's the Revolver album, you know. It's the, uh, the, the connoisseur's choice, as it were. It's, it's a strange one. But yeah, Fallout 2, by far the most popular answer we've had as such. And Tom 
Warburton says, I really don't do favourites. I would feel guilty at leaving something out. Oh, so, uh, bless him. That's a good answer, <laughs> actually. To be honest, I couldn't decide on one favourite game. I couldn't decide no. on ten, probably. It's, uh, there's so many great games I've played in my life that it's a really difficult question I, to I answer. I could probably get down to a sort of a, a short list of a few, but I certainly couldn't go for a, a, a favourite either. So, um, uh, Amy Wiley says, A Broken Sword 2, Old School Point and Click, and Final Fantasy VIII um, have left a lasting impression on well, her. It's funny those games you play as a kid, isn't it? And you, you just, even if they were good games or bad games, those are very good games, by the way. They yeah. leave that impression on Indeed. you. Indeed. Uh, yes, where are we up to? Uh, Stephen Silverwood says, uh, My favourite video game is Manic Miner because of the English surrealism and the proper F off difficulty. <laughs> the proper F off yes, difficulty. Yes, he did write F off, by the way, not the full word. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, those old school games that were really hard to play. Uh, you know what? They're coming back actually really hard games. Well, I think there's a return to that, isn't there? There's this idea now that. Um, that it doesn't have to be, you know, ridiculously easy and it doesn't have to be walked through. So, so they're going for that good old school uh, generation of, of hard games. Uh, Neil's, Neil Linker says, uh, Ge Gears of War 1, I skived work and my life collapsed. <laughs> I understand that <laughs> nice one. And I totally understand that one. Gears of War 1 was an incredible event when it first came out. So, yeah, totally on agreement on that one. Sam Devereaux says, uh, Doom 1 and Doom 2 for the PC, the original almost and greatest FPS. Nothing quite like coming to face to face with a cyber demon for the first time. Well, have to admit to that one that I totally agree that was a very scary experience well, as a little kid. To be honest, also, Sam Devereaux is, is our narrator as such. If you ever hear, you know, Persimon or, or you know, sort of... Come How up. could we disagree? We can't disagree. He's the voice of God for us. Exactly. So. Uh, Tom Coles-Rogers says, uh, Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. Oh, an amazing game for the N64. Totally agree. Ian Forbes says, Homeworld, amazing at the time graphics and haunting musical score and fantastic oh, story. Musical scores, they can certainly stay with you with games, can't they? Indeed. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Mari Beveridge says, uh, Mine is League of Legends because it's non-committal and every Every game is different. Well, that's esports for you, isn't it? Um, you know, just a new game every time. Can't argue with that. E exactly. I haven't gotten to League of Legends, like we said, but once we do, I'm sure we will love it. Indeed. Uh, Randolph Stearman says video game Galaxians, card game Top Trumps, and war game Black Powder, because it covers a number of periods, including Napoleonic, and where you get to shout your orders. Do this, do that. Charge! Charge. That's yes. always going to be Stop fun, isn't it? Persimmon. I don't know. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, Final Fantasy VII, because it brings tears to my eyes because of the storyline. Ah, oh, that's well, beautiful. That's, that's fantastic, that is. Uh, and, and finally, we had uh, Rowan Warner say uh, Frontier and Elite 2. Frontier Elite 2. I adored that game as a kid. That was a brilliant game. That's that a great fantastic. choice. That's all we've got time for. But next week, we're asking the question, uh, women gamers within a male-dominated pastime, what has been your experience? <laughs> <Quick>. <laughs> Right, well, we're here for a quick look at FIFA 15. The demo's just come out. Indeed, uh, very exciting. Well, we play quite a lot of FIFA. We, uh, FIFA 14 is a, is a favourite of ours. And it we've, certainly uh, is. It certainly played is. a lot. We're not very good at it, admittedly. Um, but, but we uh, will get better the more we play. So it, indeed. here we are. Um, the big changes uh, are presented beautifully on the screen for us here. Dynamic match presentation. Immerse yourself in the action and moments from the FIFA 15 crowds. Um, agility and control. We've noticed that there's more agility and control on the ball. You can turn more at low speed, which is nice. Uh, the goalkeepers are much harder, aren't they? The, much, it's it's much bizarre. Harder. The, uh, the, the goalkeepers seem to be a little bit harder, but the defences seem to be a little bit Indeed, easier to get Indeed, the defence is looser and the attack is, is certainly easier as well. Every uh, uh, stadium of every Premier League club is also in the game, so that's pretty cool. Fantastic. Right, Greg, let's, uh, let's do our... How do we change it to alternative? Uh, the, you do the trigger. Oh, that's the trigger. Right, that's it. There you Lovely. Go. Ha, ha, ha. We, we, um, we play alternatively. That's yes, how we, we are. Okay, let's be Barcelona. Why not? Um, Barcelona. Juniors. Okay. Make sure we can see what we're doing. And uh, yeah, let's just let's uh, get we're straight play it. one let's half here. And here we go. Right. Now remember, Greg, pass and move, pass and move, okay? Assuming, assuming we uh, get onto the ball, of course. Okay, where okay, are we? Right. Are you on the ball? Oh, 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 I'm bursting through. I'm bursting oh, through. Oh, wow, what a start. Come on. Yes! <laughs> yes! No. no. I missed. I missed. How did you miss? Oh. How did I miss? How did you miss? Oh, God. You didn't see the replay. Shocking. Shocking. You, you are missing. shocking. You. It wasn't me, obviously. You. Okay. Yeah, OK. We thought that was the perfect start, unfortunately. I'm going to go not. mark the guy at the front there. Come on, Mr. Goalkeeper, do us a favour. Kick the ball. Marvellous. Yeah, where are we going to go? We uh, told you attacking was easier in the game. We certainly noticed that. OK. OK. Oh. Oh. Uh, it's, and it's a lot more open than the previous game. You can definitely do more silky moves. You can cut through oh. the defence a lot more easily. Oh, won the ball there. Oh, oh, go on, Greg. Oh, it's got oh, it back. There that's we go. A shame. That's a shame. Uh, don't worry, don't worry. No, no, wait. Let's get We're it. all over them right now. Slice, I got. Oh! I mean, we ought to be, be able to beat a team called Juniors, quite frankly. I presume they're, uh, they're, they're 14 oh, no, year olds they're, or they're, something. Oh, no, they're in the way. Oh! 
Oh, thank God. Nice oh. save there. That's an interesting little uh, basketball uh, tap there. So it feels, it feels a lot smoother. I feel that you can get onto the ball and sort of turn around and do some of these things you a lot easier. Can. Oh, oh, he's got it. Run. No, am I going to score this time? Run, Forrest, Bet run. I'm going to score. Run. No. Oh, come <laughs> on. on. The keepers are really hard. You versus, that is the first thing we have noticed. The keepers are hard to In the to previous game, if I'd done that, I'm sure that would have been a goal. I'm sure of it. Tell me if you think it would have been. I, I, I think it would have. Answers on a postcard. Oh, uh, can it keep no. it? Oh, uh, it's our corner. Oh, dear, we've conceded a corner here. Yeah, I, I think the, the keepers are harder to get by, um, but the defence are generally easier. The fact that you've managed to run unimpeded straight up twice is oh, pretty. so close, wasn't it? Oh, oh look at that. need a bit of curl on it. Okay. Oh, oh, almost got a nice little ball oh. through there. Okay. Do it, you can do it. Here it goes again. Yes! <laughs> Finally. We scored a goal like on FIFA and it was on television. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I think um, I, I think it looks more glorious. It feels better. It's easier to get through the defence. It's harder to get through the keepers. Um, I like the ability to sort of get onto a ball and stop and turn around. So if you're trying to keep it on the side, or Absolutely. you're trying to come on defence. That's a good defensive header right there, but it's gone straight to their player. Oh, oh got it, got you it. see the muscling going on there. Yeah, you can. Yeah, the tackling's a lot more sort of dynamic. And, uh, you can sort of Bouquet, muscle them off. Bouquet, whatever his name is. Oh, right, here he comes. Oh, oh the through oh. ball didn't quite work there, I'm afraid. Um, it's OK, oh. we've got the throw. So I don't know if we'll get through the whole half here, Greg. We've only got four minutes, and uh, it is a four-minute half, but there are some cut scenes we have to look at while we play, so we'll just see how far we get. Well, that was a terrible challenge, wasn't it? Absolutely terrible. terrible. There. There's Ooh, some they're fisty each cups other. going on here. Yes, but they're not happy with bit each other. Bit of peacocking there, sort of bit of... Pre oh, red card! Red carded! What a dramatic laugh! Wow, this is, this is good. He can I didn't think it was that bad, did you? What oh. did he do? Oh, I don't know where that replay's going. Let's have a look. Let's see how bad this was. Oh, OK. He <laughs> elbowed him in the spine. That's... That was an elbow to the spine. That was not a very friendly thing to do. OK, who's taking okay, this? this is it's me. Correct. So... No pressure, but you need to score. Oh, oh, just a bit too high. It's nice a bit too high. Worth we'll try. Worth we'll try. We really ought to carry on winning this game, considering that we were one nil up and they're down to ten men. Oh, there's, there's room for a good through ball here, right? Ooh, let's bend it we're both on it now. Oh, oh that, dear. And you, oh, you took it off my feet there. I don't know. Tackling each other. That was going to be the greatest move in football history, and you took it off my feet. <laughs> if you do say so yourself. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, so the keeper tried to come out then. I notice the keeper doesn't seem to come out if you press the, the uh, through ball button, which. Uh, is interesting. I don't know if that's just a minor change. But, uh, right, let's. You can really steam through the right through ball. Oh. Right, it's all up to you, Greg. Come on, push two nil up. Yes, yes. two nil through the keeper's two legs. Nil. Did I just oh, not make the keeper? Oh, oh. You did not make the keeper. The crowd awesome. are going wild. As they should Greg. be. As they should be. What, what a goal. computer game form, otherwise known as Pedro, is having a great time there, uh, hugging all his teammates. And uh, yes, the crowd looked very, very enthusiastic. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Was that not Meg? Oh, oh, no, it no. wasn't. It was just to the left. It would have been good. Set. It would have been amazing. Um, so there you have it. This is FIFA. Um, we're very nearly out of time here. We're 2-0 up. Uh, we're very happy about this. We could have played this a dozen more times and not been 2-0 up at half-time. <laughs> <laughs> you you make us sound go. awful at this. I, I, I think we've done all right. And that is um, the end of the first half there. So uh, that's a quick sneak peek at FIFA, available at the end of the month. You can download the demo now. Coming up! Both places that you can pay for sexual favours using chips. Chandler using her patented uh, kicks to the groin there. Studio guests. Our studio guest this week needs little introduction. He has long been a staple of British television, astounding folk with magic tricks that excite and confound in equal measure. On top of that, he is a regular performer at the world's best arts festivals, appears frequently in Dictionary Corner on Countdown, and is the founder of the Wonderbus charity. In addition, he's the author of three books, a world-leading authority on Harry Houdini, and a keenly outspoken sceptic. Paul Zennon. Paul. 
Fantastic. Well, that's, Thanks for that's, coming. That's the end of the interview, then. We've got to cover everything. <laughs> <Can't> everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Does that encompass your life? We now bring yeah, out the red book and go, this is your life. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> Paul, please just give us an overview of where you came from, what got you on into your career as a magician. Well, I, I kind of grew up near Blackpool in the northwest of, of England. If you don't know Blackpool, it's Classy. got some, yeah, some classes of word that's not normally associated <laughs> with it. It's kind of got some similarities with Brighton, but otherwise it's, uh, it's quite different. Or or Las, well, I, I suppose the similarity between Blackpool and Las Vegas is they're both places that you can pay for sexual favours using chips. Awesome. I didn't even yeah. know that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Wow. You and, learn uh, something new every day. <laughs> so, uh, I'm, I'm, thinking, are we talking about poker chips or something? I'm pretty sure on Blackpool you can actually do it with you know, fish and chips. <laughs> that was the gag. That was the gag. Well, that get me lost. That's Whoa. where I went wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, so, uh, comedy scene, uh, being a magician, eight, 1980s, um, when did the big break come, if there was one? Uh, there wasn't one in particular. Um, well, he was still waiting on it, to be honest. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I suppose this, the whole street thing was, was you know, um, late 90s, 98, we did a street magic fashion. special. Yeah. The, the weird thing is, people think, uh, think, you know, people like Dynamo and stuff on TV, they think it's a, a, a recent thing. So do you um, think you know, that David Blaine and Dynamo and, and all these people and Chris Ames should, should, you know, sort of uh, top their proverbial sort of hat to you and as a, uh, no, one no, of the first? I, I think all of us as performers should kind of acknowledge that we're standing on people's shoulders to a certain yeah. extent, you know. But it's, it's quite interesting that you know someone like Dynamo is a product of the of the YouTube generation. You know, I mean, it's it's the perfect thing for sh kids showing each other in a school playground is a, a two minute trick. You are uh, considered a world of on ha on Harry Houdini, and uh, and I believe that uh, ties in with uh, going back to acting a little bit. Uh... Yeah, I, I've kind of always been a bit obsessed with with Houdini, and um, the, uh, recently I kind of have uh, done a lot of research on his assistant because I wanted to do a one man play. About Houdini, but not playing him. I haven't exactly got the physique for a start, <laughs> and I'm, I'm terrible at accents as well. Um, so uh, I, th I found this character called Jim Collins. So is that just talking about the experience of the character being around Houdini, or do you actually work magic into the show as well? Uh, there'll, there'll be almost no magic in the show, which is a bit okay. of a challenge, and it, it, it might be a disappointment to some people because obviously they, you know they might come and see me expecting uh, magic, but I just want to do something a bit more a bit more challenging, really. And um, yeah, so I'll make it very clear on the publicity: no tricks. We might. Can call it that. So, so does this mean that if we ask to see a trick from you that uh, you're going to go, no, no tricks, no, I'm not trying to... We can do... Uh, we don't have any the, the, reason, mirrors, well, the so. reason we want to see a trick is, um, is, is you also have uh, the Z-Ray deck. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting you call it Z-Ray, the Americanism, it's, it's, yeah, the, we, we call it the Z-Ray deck, but whichever okay. you like, yeah. It, it's, um, I designed it in conjunction with uh, an artist called Vince Ray, which I think a lot of people might be familiar oh, with. Um, and so we, we've, we've kind of uh, collaborated on a few things, so I sort of designed the characters for the, the court cards and he executed the artwork because he's better at drawing than me Brilliant. by a long way. But, and uh, and yeah, any cool. keen poker players or uh, card players out there, then, you know, there's definitely yeah, worth can, getting uh, there. Yeah, you can see it. Uh, we've got a website for it. It's called it's zraydeck.com. There you uh, go. Fantastic. Like you yeah. want to get your own Z-Ray deck? That's where to get it. Yeah, but it's it's um, yeah, it's, nice. it's also really really nice quality cards. <laughs> it's all about manual dexterity being a magician. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a misdirection. I've seen it before. It's a good job the floor we was done, there. He's yeah. already found our card. <laughs> <laughs> if the floor hadn't been there, that could have gone for miles. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, the, it's um, you know as it's, it's, a, it's a regular uh, deck of cards, to all intents and purposes. Um, but you, you want to see? Okay. Um, what we'll do is we'll, we'll get you to choose a card. Now, if I offer the cards like that, it kind of I might be able to influence you subtly in some little way like that. You would as well. <laughs> you too the too, one, too right? easy. The um, ones, so well, I'll tell you what we'll do. Uh, we'll I'll flick through the cards with a thumb like that, and just tell me to stop as I do that any way okay. you like. Uh, stop there. Okay. So we won't use that one because we've seen it. Grab that card there. Okay. Show the camera. I'll look down here into my system of monitors. This camera here, Greg. <laughs> Have, we seen, also that? have we seen the that? cameras? There. Have we seen okay, that? Cool. Have we, have we seen all seen that? that? There you go. Okay. Cool. And then stick it back somewhere in there. Now, there's lots. <laughs> <oops. laughs> <laughs> We've practiced oh, that's, this. That's the trick. That's, that's the, the trick. You can't get okay. back in there. Okay, we'll stick it back in there. It actually, it actually doesn't matter where it goes, that's the thing. Uh, because obviously, I'm not, I should mention there's a blank card, that's not part of the trick. Um, wow, you've made my I can make up my own card. Now, obviously, if I look through them, I might glimpse your card and whatever. Um, uh, another way to find it is, is to smell for your card. Okay. Um, that's just ridiculous. Smell I could listen card. for your card, that's equally ridiculous. I'm going to actually find it by the sense of taste today. Okay. So, I didn't notice, were you right or left handed? I'm, I'm left handed. Left so hold your, your right index finger, kind of E.T. styly, like that, oh, okay. Oh. And <laughs> so we're going to try and get a taste for you now. Okay, here we go. See, what other job could you get away with this? This is, uh, this is, this is, this is surreal. Okay. 
Only in Brighton. <laughs> I've got a taste for you now. Okay, so... Has uh, the man ever licked your finger before, mate? I, I can honestly say... <laughs> Slight of tongue. Now... Oh, my God. It's not there. It's not there. But okay. it's somewhere in the nibble. Now, who's the In the wibble. Who? Who? Long? Oh my God! God. Wow! You just regurgitated that. <laughs> that is fantastic. Wow. There. Oh my God! Yeah, the, the interesting <laughs> thing as well. That's, you can have that as a souvenir. You have to eat Thanks. every <laughs> one of every card just to be able to. I'll, I'll tell you an interesting thing. If we, get, we, we might need a close-up here, but you, you chose. I think it was. A, you agree? It was a, a free choice of card there. With yes, the definitely. The interesting thing about the pack is got a little hidden thing on the barcode. Oh really? And just uh, can we can we get a, a close-up? Get that, that on there? camera. Um, and just have a look. Three over here. What it says there. What does it say? Nine of spades. <laughs> it says it on it there. It says the nine of spades on there. If you can't see that, everyone, that says the nine of spades. That's fantastic. Always read the small print. That's, uh, that really wants to stay on the floor, doesn't it? That really it does. does. <laughs> it, does <laughs> it is magnetically attracted. Well, that, that was absolutely fantastic. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm slightly scared of ever doing anything else again now because they can use you as a tracker dog to find me. Now you have my scent, <laughs> which is uh, very worrying. But, um, uh, well, you're going to stick around because uh, coming up uh, in a second, we're going to do the uh, retro video game challenge. And I believe you've, uh, you're, you're, you're a keen gamer. You've played video games uh, all the, the time. The weird thing is I can't ever remember playing a video game. <laughs> I think I might have had a go at patience well, on, today, Paul, you know, on my uh, two eight six. Going to break your cherry, <laughs> and you're always going to play a video game for the it's very first time. It's a long time, time since I've broken a cherry, I tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, <laughs> well, coming up in a second, we're going to have uh, see how he does in our retro video game cha challenge with uh, Street Fighter 2. Studio guest communal retro video game challenge. Okay, here we go. It's our very next communal retro video game challenge, Greg. And up now is Paul Zennon. And this should be a good one. He is a self-proclaimed uh, non-expert. He's never played a video game. So, um, That's so true. this is a hell of a way to start feel, playing games. Do it on TV. Paul. That's I the way. To... I feel like a, a monkey in a spaceship. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's good. So, uh, want me to let, 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 let's crack on and see how okay. you're going to do. So, so press so the red right. start button there, Paul. Okay, That's right. there we go. Let's get it going. Uh, press and the start, start button again. again. Right. That's right. That's our mode, champion mode. And press it once. Once again to game start. Now we're going to have the character selection screen. Please choose your character. Okay. Who are you going to go for? We'll, we'll have the mass magician. The, the mass magician. The mass yeah. magician. There we go. Vega, that's an interesting choice there, Greg. He's got that those fantastic long sort of claws, a bit like uh, Wolverine almost. Maybe the reach ability will help her. Chun Li! Uh, Chun Li. Okay, oh, it's oh. going to be an interesting battle. So here right. it goes. The streets of China. Here we go, Paul. Oh, okay. Oh. Yes, look, first strike first to Paul. Blood goes to Paul. That's that's good. Oh. Chun Li using her patented uh, kicks to the groin there. It oh. may be the only hit I he gets that. on it. Oh. But oh, oh, oh well, well done, Paul. That was a nice body slam there, and a, and a scratch to the face. Well, it doesn't oh. get any nastier than that, does it? He's doing some funky backflips. It's it's fairly. It's very tentative at this point in time. Oh, oh. oh Paul's fighting back well here. I'm just hitting everything dead hard on that's the <laughs> console. That's, that's my it, strategy. Well, well, you are dead button. hard. Oh, oh. And Chun Li oh. has taken that first Chun -Li round. Chun Li takes the first round. So, Considering uh, that was Paul's first ever round, I'm actually quite impressed there, Greg. That's not bad. The, it's, the... It's just, you're just trying to humiliate me because I'm supposed to be known for manual dexterity. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> Mate, you have okay. nothing to prove. You make cards come out of your mouth. We, we, it doesn't matter if you do well in this. <laughs> yes, we really don't mind. We really don't mind. So, come on, Paul's really got to pull out the bag here to stay in the match. And he, he's just moving very methodically here. Chun Li does her flips over the top. Uh, oh, oh, oh! He feels that Paul needs to butt mash a bit more here, just to get a little bit more in the game. Yes, those claws to the face are certainly a very interesting move there, Greg. Um, so quite a nasty move, though. That you have to agree. I, I certainly wouldn't want to like a claw to the face. It seems to be working though, and if it if it ain't broke, broke, don't fix it. You That's know. right. So, oh, oh! Smash to stop Chun Li right in the middle of some spinning She tried spinning to do some there. weird. She's trying to execute. Legs akimbo, oh. spinning thing. Oh, oh no. no! Oh no! Paul is dazed. Vega is dazed. And is it going to be over? Is it going to be over? Oh, over. and it's all over. And that is it. I Paul what, I'm, I'm astonished. I thought I would wipe the board with her. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, you know what? I have to say, it's a score of 2,300. You are second on our leaderboard. I have to say, out of two. 
That's good. Well, I'd like to thank you for But, so um, you know, thank you very much indeed <laughs> you, for coming you, and trying it. You've done a great it. job. I'm, I'm, I think it's fantastic that you gave it a go. You've never played one before. Well, as I was saying before, I think uh, yeah, it feels that I've squandered 20 odd years not doing this. <laughs> well, as a gaming show, obviously, we think that too. But uh, Absolutely. That's well, all we've got time for this week. That is, uh, join us next week uh, and uh, our Friday at 9 o'clock, where we're going to be here. As and, usual. Uh, so thanks to Paul Zenon once again. And uh, we'll see all of you next week. So we'll take care. We'll see you then. Game on. Game on.